What is WPF? WPF means Windows Presentation Foundation, which is a next-generation presentation system for building Windows client applications with visually stunning user experiences. With WPF, you can create a wide range of both standalone and browser-hosted applications. Regarding WPF's architecture, the red sections of the diagram that can be seen in your screen are the major code portions of WPF. Of these, only one is an unmanaged component, Milcor. Milcor is written in unmanaged code in order to enable tight integration with DirectX. So what are the features of WPF? One of the useful features in WPF is data binding. Most applications are created to provide users with the means to view and edit data. For WPF applications, the work of storing and accessing data is already provided for by technologies such as Microsoft SQL Server and ADO.NET. After the data is accessed and loaded into an application's managed objects, the hard work for WPF applications begins. Essentially, this involves two things. One, copying the data from the managed objects into controls where the data can be displayed and edited. Two, ensuring that changes made to data by using controls are copied back to the managed object. What are the fundamentals of WPF? Number one, extensible application markup language are also known as XAML. XAML is a declarative markup language. As applied to the .NET Framework Programming Model, XAML simplifies creating a UI for a .NET Framework application. You can create visible UI elements in the declarative XAML markup, and then separate the UI definition from the runtime logic by using code behind files. Join to the markup through partial class definition. Second, dependency properties. Third, styling and templating. Fourth, layout system. So, WPF's advantages are board integration, resolution independence, hardware acceleration, declarative programming, rich composition and customization, and easy deployment. XAML stands for Extensible Application Markup Language. It's a simple language based on XML to create and initialize .NET objects with hierarchical relations. Today, XAML is used to create user interfaces in WPF, Silverlight, declare workflows in WF, and for electronic paper in the XPS standard. The image that you can see in your screen represents the elements in XAML. Root elements. To be considered as a root element, the element must be a container of at least one other element. Examples are stack panel, doc panel, canvas, grid, and page. A custom root element can be created by deriving from page or window and exposing them as XAML element. Next is the control element. It has five types. Simple controls, content controls, item controls, header item controls, and header content controls. Simple controls do not have content, items, and header attributes. It is derived from system.windows.controls. Examples are horizontal scroll bar, vertical scroll bar, frame, text box, rich text box, and etc. Item controls do not have items and header attributes but have content attributes. Examples are button, repair button, label, radio button, checkbox, list box item, 
group item, and etc. Item controls do not have content and header attributes, but have item attributes. It usually exposes list of elements, usually offering a choice. Examples are list box, combo box, menu, context menu, radio button list, tab control, and etc. Header item controls do not have content attribute, but have item and header attributes. One example is menu item. The next element is the panel element. Panel elements handle page layout and act as a container for elements like controls or other panels. The primary purpose of the panel is to provide support for layout and placement of elements on the page. Some panel classes are intended for designing the user interface, while others are special panels designed for specifically for special layout scenarios. The panel elements designed for user interface design are Dock Panel, Stack Panel, Canvas, Wrap Panel, and Grid. Shape and Geometric Elements Shape and Geometric Elements represent 2D vector graphics. Shapes derive from the Shape class and represent predefined geometric shapes. WPF shapes available for use with XAML are Ellipse, Line, Path, Polygon, Polyline, and Rectangle. Shapes are a type of a UI element, which means they can be used inside panels and most other controls. Geometric elements, while also representing 2D vector graphics, are more flexible than shape elements and can be used for hit testing and clipping purposes. Document elements. Document elements handle document presentation. There are two types of document elements, flow and fixed. The fixed document element is designed to be what you see is what you get. A flow document provides more flexibility in appearance to enhance readability. Block elements such as block, figure, floater, list, list item, paragraph, section, table, and table cell are used to organize and format blocks of text. Inline elements are used to format text within a block. Inline elements are bold, access key, line break, hyperlink, italic, subscript, superscript, and underline. XAML layout and positioning. Margins and padding. Margin is the distance between a control and its children, and padding is the distance between the outer edge of a control and its children. Padding can be applied to three elements, block, border, and control, since these elements have an outer edge. As with margin in CSS, you can have margin values for left, top, right, and bottom via abbreviated syntax with these order, left, top, right, and bottom. Grids. Grid is the XAML equivalent of what you saw as the table in CSS. Each child element can have a grid row and grid column attribute to position it in a specific cell. Grid has its own child elements to declare the schema of it. Grid row definitions and grid column definitions are the elements that declare the schema of the grid. Grid row definitions can have a collection of row definition elements and grid column definitions can have a collection of column definition elements.